Hi, Kevin here. Well, I'm getting ready to fix a 1950s dessert called Sweet Cream Cake. The recipe comes from the Betty Crocker Picture Cookbook that was published in 1950. Now, the first thing you will need is either two 9-inch cake pans or a 9 by 13 baking dish. I'm going to use this baking dish which measures 12 inches by 8 and a half inches. So we'll see how it works out. In any event, you need to grease and flour your cake pans or your 9 by 13 pan. The easiest way to grease and flour a pan, of course, is with baking spray. Baking spray contains flour. Okay, I'm going to move you over to the workstation. All right. So what I have here is two and a quarter cups of sifted all-purpose flour. And flour must be sifted, so either use a sieve or one of these sifting gadgets. And you sift the flour and then spoon the flour into measuring cups. And again, that's two and a quarter cups of sifted all-purpose flour. And to the flour, we're going to add three teaspoons of baking powder. You want to level off your teaspoon. Okay, so that's three teaspoons of baking powder. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. and then whisk these dry ingredients to combine them. I think that's good. All right, next you need three large eggs at room temperature. So I let my eggs sit out for about 30 minutes. And we're going to beat the eggs until they turn pale and thick. That's going to take about, well, they say five minutes using rotary beaters, which probably means those old-fashioned crank beaters. Uh, but this will probably take, oh, two minutes or so. And I am using the whisk attachment on my KitchenAid. So I'll come back when the eggs are properly beaten. Okay. The eggs have definitely turned thick. You can see it's slowly dripping from the whisk attachment. So now I'm going to exchange the whisk for the paddle attachment. Okay. And then we're going to gradually add one and a third cups of regular granulated sugar. We're going to do this at medium to medium low speed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my grandmother used to make this cake. I know she made a lot of desserts that involved heavy cream. little more here. And then the last batch. In you go. All right, that's plenty mixed. So now I'm going to take one and a third cups of heavy cream. And to the cream, I'm going to add, let's see how much Vanilla, it's one and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Let's pour that in. You don't have to stir it about. And then I'm going to be adding uh, the flour mixture and the heavy cream in alternating additions. 
going to do this at low speed. So we'll start with the flour. And add some of the cream. Oh, that vanilla smells fabulous. Now this uh, recipe actually said stir in the flour and the cream in alternating additions. So you could definitely do this just with a spoon. More cream. Now I'm going to add the remaining flour. Ooh, I had the machine on too high. Lost some of my flour. Oh well, I'm sure this will still work out just fine. And here goes the remaining cream. Well, I lost some of the cream, which means we've probably eaten everything out now. This is live baking, people. This looks luxurious. Check that out. Let me zoom you out a little bit. Scrape all this goodness off the paddle attachment. Then I'm going to give this a quick stir with the spatula just to make sure there's no flour collected at the bottom of the bowl. And we look good. Okay, I'm going to move my mixer out of the way and then we're going to pour this into the prepared pan. My oven is already preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in goes the batter. Oh, this, as I said, it's a luxurious batter. Okay. There's, I just heard Mr. Fox returning after taking Avery the dog for a walk. I'm going to smooth this out. And then this is going to bake in the preheated 350 degree oven and for about 40 minutes. And uh, let me talk with you. Okay, I just checked the recipe and it says that for two 9 inch cake pans, to bake at 350 for 25 to 30 minutes. And for a nine by 13 oblong or rectangular pan, like I'm using, uh, to bake for 40 to 45 minutes. And about three minutes before the cake is done, you sprinkle the top with a mixture of cinnamon and sugar, which I'm going to do. Okay, I'll come back when the cake is ready for the cinnamon and sugar topping. All right, here's the cake. I did set my timer for 40 minutes, and then at 37 minutes, I brought the cake out of the oven. So now I'm going to sprinkle it with a mixture of cinnamon and sugar. Yay! I have to tell you, this smells really wonderful. Okay. I think that'll, that will do it. 
I'm going to put this back into the oven for three minutes, and then we'll come back. And here's the cake, now fully baked at just 40 minutes. And it puffed up beautifully, and again, it just smells divine. So I'm going to let this cool on a wire rack, and when it's achieved room temperature, I'm going to cut into it and have a taste. All right, the cake isn't quite at room temperature yet, but I couldn't resist. So I cut it into squares, and as you can see, I've already eaten one of the squares. And let me tell you, this cake is powerfully delicious. Sorry, I'm not going to use a plate, nor a fork, nor a knife. I'm going to eat it out of hand. Look at how fluffy this is. It's really light too, which is unfortunate because I could inhale this whole cake. You guys, this cake is powerfully delicious. I hope you'll give it a try someday. And I wanted to tell you that the scent of this cake is very familiar to me. And I was trying to think, why is it familiar? And then I realized it smells like my grandmother's house. Yeah, and I'm talking about my paternal grandmother, my father's mother. Uh, her house always smelled like this cake. Cinnamon, sugar, heavy cream, vanilla. So again, please give this cake a try. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, and I'll post the list of ingredients in the description box below. Okay, see you next time. Bye for now.